Hello and welcome back to B Monster Laboratory. Today we're going to create our own DIY motion activated sound device using a relay module, a motion sensor, and an 8 megabyte sound module that I bought off Amazon. It's the same type of sound module you may find in a gift card or a music box. Today we're going to use it as part of our project. Stick around for this one. Now this would be considered a very basic or beginner project that could have a lot of different applications. You could put this in a music box or a teddy bear, a motion activated teddy bear if you, if you want to do that. I even thought about doing like a motion activated shadow box. So you could take this and, and do whatever you want with it. I think it's pretty fun, pretty simple, pretty easy and pretty neat. I'm going to mount mine to just a piece of wood here. I think I got this frame. Uh, from Walmart, I think in the arts and crafts store, but you can just mount it to a piece of wood That's what I'm going to do for now And you could even turn it over here and you can mount it and then put a plastic case over it if you wanted to do that to protect it So let's stop talking and let's get started The first component is the HCSR 501 motion sensor module now I got this one from my Elegoo kit, but you can certainly buy these separately on eBay or Amazon. I purchased a lot of 10 of them on eBay. They do take forever, but they are certainly cheaper. Now you can buy them on Amazon, you're gonna pay a little bit more. I wanna tell you a little bit about this item, if you're interested. This is the HCSR501 PIR motion detector. It operates between five and 20 volts. So the lens on top is called a Fresnel lens. It's a composite compact lens. The contours act as individual refracting surfaces that refract the signal onto the sensor, which is right here. And here you can see the inside of the lens. And that cover goes right over top of the sensor like that. Now flip it over here on the back and you'll notice that there are three pins up here at the top. As I'm looking at it, the pin on the far left is your ground pin. And the pin in the middle is your, your output pin. And the pin on your right is your power pin, your VCC pin. And if you flip it over here to this side, you can see there are two adjustments. This adjustment here is a sensitivity adjustment. And this adjustment here is the time delay adjustment. So ideally, this module operates between 3 and 7 meters. And if you want to decrease sensitivity, you turn this fully to the right, and it'll give you a range of approximately 3 meters. If you want to increase sensitivity, you can turn it all the way to the left, and it'll give you approximately 7 meters range. You can operate it outside of those parameters, but it may not be optimal. Your time delay adjustment operates between 3 seconds and 5 minutes. And if you turn it all the way to the right, you'll increase the delay to 5 minutes. And if you turn it all the way to the left, you can decrease the delay to about 3 seconds. So over here we have a jumper set with a single trigger mode or repeatable trigger mode. Right now it's on repeat trigger mode. And that basically means the time delay is restarted every time motion is detected. If I want to the single trigger mode, I would just move this jumper set down to these two pins and the time delay is started immediately upon detecting motion and continued detection is blocked. So it's set right now for repeatable trigger but if I wanted I could set it for single trigger. Now this is a 5 volt 1 channel relay module. I purchased two of these on Amazon for $5.79. You can certainly buy more of them in bulk order on eBay for cheaper but again you're gonna, it's going to take you a while to get these. I ordered them on Amazon because I get them quicker, but uh, you're going to pay a little bit more. Let's check these out. This is our 5 volt relay that we're using. So over here you're going to see some three ports. You're going to see your DC plus, your DC minus, and your IN. The DC plus is your power, and then your ground will go in the middle here, and your input will go on the right. If you look over here, you've got a jumper set, and this is for the high and low level trigger. Now on the other side here, you're going to see you're going to see three ports, and this uh, pin right here is your NC pin or normally closed, and you're going to use this when you want the relay to be closed by default, meaning that there's uh, current going through it unless a signal is sent to the relay to open or to stop that current. Over here you have COM, which is for the common pin, and then over here you have NO, which is normally open, 
and the normally open configuration works the other way. The relay is always open, so the circuit is broken unless you send a signal to the module to close the circuit. This item is a simple 8 megabyte sound module that I ordered off Amazon. There are cheaper ones out there that are a little bit smaller. This one's 8 megabyte. They can hold about two and a half minutes of song or voice recording. And it comes with a port where you can just use your USB cable to load the sound or song or whatever right onto the, onto the card here. Very simple, very easy to use. Let's take a brief look at this one. Let's check it out. So the sound module that I got, I got it on Amazon. It does come with an on-off switch right here that you can see. It also came with a button that I removed because I will not be using and I could probably use it at another time. Here is the power cable. Here's the speaker that came connected to the board. And here is your mini USB port. This is where you're going to plug your cable in to transfer your music on and off of the board. I believe this is called a mini USB. You can see that it's kind of like the old, the older style uh, cell phone chargers that we used to use for Android. For this demo, I'm going to use a breadboard power supply here. I like this because it'll power the rails over here and over here for the breadboard. And it offers 5 volt and 3.3 volt. You have two options to supply power to this. The first option is the USB. And then the second option, which I prefer, is the wall adapter. You can plug it straight into the outlet. You can, uh, there's also an on off switch right here. So this is very convenient for what I'm doing today. But if you, if you don't have one, you can also just use a battery pack. Works just fine. There are three AA batteries in here. Now the first thing I want to do is add my cables to these three pins here. So I'll add the middle one first. Now the second thing I want to do is connect the leads that come off of my sensor. Now the only one that's going to go directly to my relay is the output, which is the middle one. In my case, it'd be orange. So I'm going to put that in the IN spot here. And then tighten the screw. Since I'm getting power from this breadboard power supply, I want to connect my ground wire, which is the purple one here, to the ground position. And then the one on the far right here is my VCC or power. I want to connect that to the positive strip here. The third thing I want to do here is supply power to my relay. So I'll go ahead and put these jumpers in the relay, tighten the screws. And this one's my positive. So it'll go right in there. This one here is my ground. So it'll go right here. Now the next thing I want to do is connect my sound module. So I'm going to supply power to the module. And I'll just plug these in here. I could also put them in here too because power is being supplied both sides here. The next thing I'm going to do is this is the cable that my switch came from which I don't need anymore but I'm going to strip these a little bit more and I have been connecting these to the relay using these guys and that's fine but I think I would I want to just put these directly in there. So I look at the back and I see that the green is the ground. This is the ground wire for my button that, that was previously on here. I'm going to take it and put it in the common. I'm going to tighten it. And then I'm going to take my other cable here that was previously part of my button. I'm going to put it in the normally open. And I'm going to tighten the screw. 
And now all my connections are ready. I want to make sure that this remains in. This is a strand wire, which is kind of hard to put in a breadboard, but I've managed so far. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and add some power to my breadboard. So for the first minute, this will initialize, which it'll, it'll go on and then go off and go on and off and on and off. So after that, it should work fine. So remember that the time delay adjustment is the one furthest from the jumper set. That's the easiest way to remember it. And if you turn it all the way to the right, it is set for five minutes. But since I know there's two and a half minutes on this sound module, I'll put it somewhere in the middle and it'll play the whole song before it starts over again. But for time's sake, we'll just go ahead and turn it all the way left to the shortest amount of time delay. So it does detect motion up close, but like I said, probably not optimal, but it will detect motion. So when you lift the speaker up, it is louder. It is a lot louder than it, it is when it's laying down. If you don't have a breadboard power supply and you just want to use a battery pack like I have here, this one has three AA batteries, which is four and a half volts, which is perfectly fine for powering this project, as you can see here. So now it's time to create my project um, platform, is what I'll call it. And what I did was I used that piece of wood, the, the frame, and I used that as my platform. Then I measured out a little stand, a holder, for the motion sensor. And I made that out of, um, it's almost like popsicle sticks. It's a real thin hobby wood. And if you're not careful, you can split the wood, which I did a couple times. So you have to go very slow. It's not ideal. They do sell acrylic. Uh, more durable uh, plastic holders for these, but I don't have any so I just made my own. I used hot glue to hold it together. You'll also see when it came time to attach the relay module to my platform, I used some standoff screws, some spacers so that uh, the bottom wouldn't touch the platform and that was kind of nice. So the stand that I made for the sensor is actually held together by hot glue, but the, the sensor itself is mounted on the stand using a nut and bolt.
when it came time to attach my sound module to the platform, I didn't have spacers to lift it up a little bit because in order to plug in my mini USB to the port, I needed some space underneath the board so I couldn't do it flat and flush against the platform. So what I did was I cut a piece, a couple pieces of this wood, I hot glued them together and hot glued them to the platform, laid my sound module on top of that, and then used some nut and bolts to attach it to the top of that. So it's not glued on, it's just laying on top of the wood, but it is bolted through the platform for stability. Well, this is my final product. I have everything mounted. I was able to lift the speaker up so that it'd be a little bit louder. I have hot glued the wires to the speaker onto the stand here. I'm not going to hot glue any other wires just yet because I don't know if this is going to be permanent or not. And I do have the temporary power source in the back as you see. This may change a little bit, but uh, this is what I've got for now. And now I can place this anywhere I want to, near an outlet and just set the sensitivity and the time for the sensor and then anytime there's motion it'll start up. I have sufficiently drove everyone nuts with this song so I am now going to plug in my USB cable to the sound board here and I'm going to go into the computer and I'm going to delete my old song and then put a new mp3 file in there. It's as easy as dragging and dropping the new mp3 and then Whammo bammo, there's a, a tune that everybody can enjoy. Well, that's all I've got for today. If you enjoy these type of simple projects, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to add more content like this to our channel. As always, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it very much. And until next time, take care, and I'll see you very soon.